We're here at Ikea today playing house a little bit. <laughs> We're sitting at the dining table right now about to have a bowl of cereal. No. I'm not eating that cereal. Come along with us today. We're going to show you some things that we're looking at for the new house, ideas, concepts. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for tons of house renovation and new build and design inspiration because we are going to take you along with us every step of the way. Kind of looking at kitchen layouts and things just kind of trying to see how we want to set it up i don't think we're going to use much although jamie really loves their sink that they've got back here yeah well you're going to be building the cabinet so that's like not a moot point and we can't afford solid surface countertops so we will be using concrete and making our own countertops so i don't love the stove so far away from the refrigerator but I do love the basic flow of this setup and this is a lot about the size that our kitchen will be so it gives me a good idea. I don't want a sink or stove or anything in the island because I want the island to look like a piece of furniture. I also don't want the kids to do this. <laughs> yeah, you know Jack's gonna like have the kitchen flooded every day if we have a sink yeah, like that. So that's not gonna happen. And if there's a stove, when the kids are here, they can like lean over and touch it. So I want the island to just be an island and then have a sink with a window overlooking the backyard. Probably no upper cabinets, at least on this one side, because I'd like a door to the backyard. And we're gonna have so much cabinetry that I just think it's a moot point. It's not really necessary. Double oven though. Yeah, got the keeper. So this is a feature on all of the Ikea kitchens that I've seen that I really like. They've got the fridge here, and then you always have like this void. So a spec home is gonna be built to kind of just fit a variety of sizes, a fridge kind of a generic size. And we'll definitely do something like this in our kitchen with the cabinetry where it comes down flush with the fridge. I will no longer be able to store like a myriad of things I don't want the kids to touch on the top of the fridge. That is the worst at putting all of this stuff up here. You gotta <laughs> put it in here. Yeah. So this is a lot closer to the style of kitchen that we're looking at getting as far as the island goes because I want to be able to sit at it. And this is similar to the color of countertops that we'll have from this event. And I do love these light fixtures. It's kind of always been in my plan to use these. They've got a couple that are this size. They're a little bit smaller. There's this ginormous beast of one that only has one bowl. So I'm not sure how that would work out. But if we wind up opening up the rafters, I would not be opposed to putting these hanging down from the rafters in the main They would area. be up higher though. Yeah, so you would get more light. Right? Yeah. And you can't beat the price, 60 bucks. Look, you can see they've got that little drop down to cover up the gap from the fridge. I'm loving that so much. So I love the idea of a floating hutch like this. My grandma's dishes have been in a box forever, so I'd like to display them in the house. Obviously, we won't be buying this one because that's what's going to be building all of our cabinets. But this is the style of cabinetry that we are going to have, just the shaker style, very simple flat panel with a nice trim around the edge. This cabinet is actually not a bad deal. It's about $800 for the entire cabinet and it's six feet wide and about five feet deep. I'll be able to build something similar to this. Even if we put glass in, it'll probably cost about 100 to 150 in materials, maybe less than that. So in this kitchen, they've got the big stove and range set up close to the fridge and yeah, also close oven, to the sink. Yeah, that's double. And then in the island, they also have this smaller unit. It's a microwave. Oh, is that a microwave? Uh, ours will go in the pantry. I don't I like see. these because I don't like little kids having access to the microwave. They can get burned really, really bad. So I would never do this. I love the garbage in here. Right now we have it in the pantry, but the kids just chuck it in the pantry. So the garbage gets all over the wall, all over the floor. I like this. I feel like it's a little bit more neat and then tidy and then it just goes right in away i also love drawers i feel like most kitchens do not have enough drawer space this is a great way to store your dishes and it's a lot more user friendly you don't have dead space in the back of the cabinet you can pull the whole drawer out so i do plan on more drawer storage here's a skinnier option you can put all the things that you need to get to really drawers are the way to go in your in your cabinetry Pantry time, how are we gonna get it shelved? So I love these baskets. Zeb will build all the shelving, but this is really smart. For your potatoes, your chips, your snack foods for your kids. 
So I do like this basket system, although I don't know. Does that feel like it's... It might just be the way it's installed here on display. It might be sturdier than it that. it has to be super sturdy. Yeah, as soon as you get kids messing with anything, expect it to break. Yeah, I like these little risers here for your canned goods. And the other thing is, I like a really clean countertop. I do not enjoy appliances on a countertop. You'll only ever see one, and that's my KitchenAid because it's pretty. So having a big walk-in pantry allows for all your appliance storage tucked away, and when you need it, you can pull it out. In fact, we currently have our toaster in a cabinet, and when we need to toast, we pull it down, we do the toast, we put it back. My mom thinks I'm crazy, but I cannot stand dirty, cluttered countertops. I want it all put away. So our walk-in pantry will be about this size. Yeah, it'll be close to this size here. And I, instead of having like a cabinet like this, we'll probably have an extra freezer or an extra refrigerator and freezer in the pantry because Either we're going to have to spend a lot of money on an industrial fridge and freezer or we have to have two because with five kids, we always need extra storage, especially around the holidays when we're having parties and stuff. So I really love this plate shelf. This would be another idea for my grandma's dishes. Do a couple of these next to each other and then have cabinets go below. The price is not very expensive, so it might be beneficial to just go ahead and buy them if we run out of time. But we may build them just because this is not real wood. so. Yeah, it's 60 bucks, but I can guarantee that this is like a particle or fiberboard MDF style. The nice thing is, though, you get these plate holders that they don't let them fall over off of the wall. Well, and the other thing, too, is this is not something that's going to get a lot of use. It's more for display, and then seasonally we take down the dishes to use. So I think it might be, this might be the case where buying it from Ikea might be an okay thing. Maybe get two of them. No, for sure, because it's chintzy looking with one, but you put two of these next to each other and you put a cabinet below, um, you're good. Do you see how there's no upper cabinets here? I love this one. I'm not sure that I would do the hanging plants, but I'm not opposed to that idea because it's pretty. I would also consider doing like some floating shelves with some display, just like plates or whatever above it because we're gonna have such a big kitchen. I don't feel like it's necessary to have big uppers. So here's the breakdown of this kitchen here. It's actually about $20,000. If you're an IKEA family member, it's $18,767. But it fits in a 21 by 15 foot one inch space. So we do wanna add a door from the kitchen into the backyard. We're gonna have a big porch area back there once we're all done. And this configuration has an attached island to the counter, but it might work. We might consider something like this. Probably not as modern as this, but still kind of maybe this style, something similar to it. Jamie's liking the metal shelves for the pantry that they have in here much better. We kind of like this setup here and the way it flows. The dining room's over here. Got a little bit of storage, probably some shelves not open like that. And then the pantry is in here where you've got all your things. So I do like this hardware. So we'll check out this hardware. They have a whole cabinet door section where you can... So I actually think that I like the skinnier trim as opposed to this fatter trim, like the shaker style with slimmer lines on the edge. Lots of different hood styles. Stoves aren't bad. That's only $7.45 for this gas range here. I much prefer design-wise and just for efficiency to have everything up front instead of having it in the back because you have to leap over the stove to get it. If you've got a pot on here, you risk burning yourself. Plus, it's much more streamlined to have this back open. You just have a backsplash behind there instead of having, this is like a, a more dated look to have this in So many options. My first option is always to find something thrifted, used, vintage, but if I can't find the farmhouse sink I want, this is the only option for me because they're so expensive online. But here you can get a double basin farmhouse sink for $200. You can't beat that. I am probably going to do black hardware again, which is what we had which, well, it's what we currently have at our house, but we don't love necessarily the elongated, skinny, modern part of our pools. 
I like this because this is more traditional, a little bit more the way they would have been made way back when. And I do love these egg pulls too. And the price is right, $8.99 for two. I'm gonna have to remember that when we're working on projects to come pick these up here because that's only $4.50 a knob and that's a really great price for cup pulls. So welcome to the world of Ikea lighting. The options are endless. We're gonna be doing a little bit of shopping for tomorrow's Waste Not Wednesday live. So if you're watching this video the day it airs, make sure you hit that notifications button so you don't miss out. We're gonna show you how to use Ikea lighting and found items and create your own light fixtures. So my first choice is always to find something thrifted, but I always like a backup in case I can't find what I want. I do love these light fixtures here. I wish they weren't frosted. So I think you could actually take like a mason jar and cut out the bottom and then attach that to the top. I don't know. I wouldn't cut the bottom out. I just bent the top How of the mason jar. Here? And I actually do love these for like wall lights or whatever. I think they're really charming. Again, I'm going for a lot of black, so I would probably just spray paint them. The look is nice. They have three different sizes on these yeah, ones. Yeah, so they've got the little baby lights. We've got the medium ones here and the giant ones here. If we end up breaking the budget, that style light right there is only $18. Yeah, it also works. And this? Oh, look, they've got some over here, too. Yeah, these are really cool. This one's on sale, I think. No, that's cool. The little one's $10. I like the yeah. gold on it. I also like the cord. The wrapped cord is cool. But here is another thing. This is something that you might, this style is something that's really like craftsman. So I wouldn't be opposed to putting some lamps like this in the house. So lots of lots of options, lots of different layouts, things we need to think about. Coming up here pretty quick, we may be renovating kitchen stuff as soon as two to three weeks out. So we really need to do our shopping fast. I always like thrifted, but my next best is Ikea. I pretty much tell everybody that everything in our home is either from Ikea or the thrift store. We're mostly here getting ideas for now. I'm gonna build most of this stuff and Jamie's gonna put the finishing touches on it. We're gonna have lots of house building videos, tips, tricks, ways to save money, do things yourself. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Hit the subscribe button.